Poor connection, but we're live anyway. So forgive the interruptions from the network quality. We'll go ahead and do this because we haven't done a live video for, I don't know, has it been a whole week? Um, I apologize that it's been so long. Dr. Mark Vaughn of the Auburn Medical Group, live on YouTube with you. If you're watching this after the fact, you'll probably want to skip ahead to a couple minutes into it when we really get into the discussion because the first part of the video is usually me greeting people as they come in as they're here live, like Hannah Banana, we're glad to have you be a part of things. Hello, thank you for joining us. And we'll go ahead and see a lot of other people that we, we see quite often. Oh, Audrey, you're right here right from the beginning. You've been missing so many of them, and now you're here just right from the very start. So congratulations, Audrey. Uh, maybe it's that I started later that you're able to be here right on time, but it worked out. So we're glad to have both of us here. And thank you so much for all your comments on all of the videos lately. I do believe that you caught the one that we're going to be talking about, the myringotomy and tympanostomy tube placement on Shelly. Sandra Jenkins, thank you so much for complimenting by telling me that you love my videos. That's very kind. Uh, that makes me feel good about making them and encouraged to continue making them for you. Crazy Cat Lady from Tulsa, of course. We recognize you and welcome you to the, uh, the evening and glad to have you be a part of things. I'm so encouraged that the... Uh, it seems the quality of the stream is quite good. Uh, we're in a different location than usual, and the uh, the Wi-Fi is not what we would hope it would be. Pamela Shramke from Indianapolis, of course. Thank you for being with us this, this evening. And Boo Boo, of course. Thank you, Boo Boo. We're glad to have you here. Um, always feel a little bit more secure in my public speaking skills when I see that Boo Boo is there supporting me. Laura E., greetings from San Diego. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Laura, from San Diego for greeting us as we get started on this live chat, uh, speaking about Miringotomy 2 placement video that uh, the first of three has already come out. Rose Dawson, hello to you also. Uh, those of you who don't know, we, we have uh, a video on uh, myringotomy or uh, an incision placed into an eardrum to drain fluid and tympanostomy tube placement. That is, the first one is up already, was put up on Tuesday at 4. Part 2 is coming tomorrow at 4 o'clock. And then we're also going to have part 3 Tuesday at 4 o'clock of next week. Now, uh, as we get into a little bit of discussion about it, um, what we'll be doing is kind of uh, selecting comments to pay attention to that are more relevant to the discussion of the Miringotomy video, and of course, Super Chats. If you hit the little dollar sign there, of course, you guys on iPhones, you can't, or iPads, but other people can hit, yeah, Pamela, part two, coming at four o'clock tomorrow afternoon, uh, two o'clock uh, Pacific time, I guess that would be... No, I'm sorry, 4 o'clock Pacific time. I guess that'd be 6 o'clock your time. Uh, Laura thought it was interesting. Uh, oh, back to what Super Chat is. Yeah, if you see a little dollar sign there when you put in a comment, when you try to chat, um, for the people watching this live, you can uh, hit that and put a dollar amount that you put in, and that, that'll that make your comment uh, have a, a color uh, background to it so it stays up longer. I think it stays up like for a minute per dollar you put in. Something like that. So it allows people to kind of break through the noise and, and get noticed. Even if your, your uh, comment is not necessarily on topic about the myringotomy and tympanostomy tube placement on Shelly. And I understand that her ear is doing better. I, I have actually heard that. I haven't spoken to her specifically uh, about her. Oh, actually, I did talk to her about her ear, and she said she was doing Pamela. Uh, great question, Audrey. I always wondered that as well. Uh, Rose Dawson, is myringotomy tube, is myringotomy tube in the ears? Uh, we actually call the tube a tympanostomy tube, although some people call it a myringotomy tube also. Myringotomy refers to the hole placed in the eardrum, uh, which actually is a tympanostomy tube. But when we talk about myringotomy, we're usually, even though it actually means the same thing by definition, we're talking about when you're taking the fluid out and the tympanostomy is referring to the hole that's left behind. And the reason that the hole stays open is because a tympanostomy tube is put in. And I believe you can see the tube on part one, but I'm not totally sure. Why would you need tubes in ears? Okay, um, it's not explained super well at the beginning of part one, but it comes in part three. Dr. Fife, the ENT surgeon who did the procedure, does a great explanation of it, but I'll do it here. So, uh, and also in the comments of the video, um, I discussed it and I copied and pasted it a couple times because people are asking the same question. So it, it is good for us to go over that. And the live video is a great place for it. Uh, people will get fluid buildup in their ears and it can happen for various reasons. Uh, it can happen because of allergies or a cold. 
It also is contributed to by having uh, rather sudden changes in elevation. This can just happen with driving. Uh, the one we're familiar with is driving on Interstate 80 between uh, Roseville and Tahoe in that area where you get uh, elevation changes rather, rather quickly. And uh, if you have any swelling or fluid or mucus in the eustachian tube between the ear and the back of the nose throat area, you can have it not able to equalize pressure and then it gets closed off because of that. And when there's a relative vacuum behind the ear in the middle ear area relative to what's going on outside, which would happen as you're going down in an airplane, then you'll have the, the uh, relative vacuum kind of pulling in the mucous membranes and blocking the eustachian tube where it can drain. And it can also kind of make it more likely that fluid will leave blood vessels in the mucous membranes and uh, get extruded into or leak into the, uh, the cavity there. And then that fluid will end up sitting behind the eardrum and it, in this case, affected Shelley's hearing. I'm reading, come here, people getting tubes in their ears, mostly due to excessive ear infections. Okay, and ear infections is another way that it happens, and usually those ear infections are happening because it's not draining. So the situation that Shelly had, if that was to continue on and on, and somehow bacteria got in there, then, then she would also have uh, the, the infection situation. Thankfully, she did not have the infection situation. She just had the fluid buildup. But the fluid can affect the movement of the tympanic membrane, which is what uh, converts sound waves into a form of information that your body can interpret as sound through the little bones, the ossicles, the three bones in the uh, middle, uh, inner ear, uh, middle ear, excuse me. So that's why the tube was placed, so that her hearing would be corrected and so that we could get that fluid drained out more quickly than it was happening on its own because obviously it wasn't happening. This has been going on for weeks that she was you know, feeling like her hearing was going in one ear. It was kind of concerning to her. And thankfully, it was just the, the fluid and was able to be taken care of. And you see the actual myringotomy and suction done in, in episode one or part one that came out on Tuesday. And there's a link to it in the description already. I put it in before we got started. Uh, that was <laughs> part of what delayed me getting this part. You know, obviously, I didn't even uh, get on at all Tuesday night. Uh, or Monday night, and now tonight uh, a little bit late, and I apologize for that. Really glad to be able to have our, our discussion, our live video. And um, I, I was actually really excited to get to it uh, Monday night because I was anticipating this three-part uh, collaboration series with Dr. Five. Usually when we talk, I'm sorry, I keep scratching my nose, it itches today. Usually when we talk about collaboration, it's with another YouTube doctor. Dr. Fife is not a YouTube doctor. He's actually in the same office as Dr. Trauner, the dermatologist that we collaborated with. We were in the same office in Roseville uh, when we did that. In fact, the exam room probably looked very similar. It's not the exact same exam room, but they, they're similar uh, from room to room. Uh, and that was a very cool procedure to do because of having the, uh, the uh, operating microscope that we were able to get the video feed from and include in the video. Okay, uh, Boo Boo Kitty and Audrey are having a discussion about itching behind the eardrum, and that's a different situation. Usually that's more related to allergies and release of histamine rather than the fluid, although you can have fluid with that, uh, but it's not the fluid itself that's causing the itching, unless it has histamine and other uh, chemical mediators of um, allergy reactions, allergic reactions in it. So that is, in a summary, what's going on. Now, I'll give you guys, since you're on the live video, I'll give you a little peek into what's coming up tomorrow because it's not straightforward. Um, a lot of people talked about how, how oh, look how Shelly's just sitting still and she's taking it so good, and, and she did. But uh, you'll see something else come up. And, uh, and, and just for you guys, I'll let you know. Uh, it's not just in part part two that you see it. It's part three, too. Yeah, Rose, it is very interesting. Um, I'm excited for you guys to see it. So, um, and uh, one thing I actually thought about, and I'll go ahead and say this, is how it would be perceived by viewers, what happens. I don't want to say it's a complication. It's just something that often happens during procedures. They happen during procedures in our office. I'm trying to think if it's happened in any of our videos. Um, 
I can think of Dr. Gwain having this happen uh, in a procedure that he did that we didn't get on video. Uh, when somebody has a vasovagal episode, and this can happen, this can happen just with getting your flu shot, a uh, vasovagal episode. It's just you, you don't know who it's going to happen to unless they tell you they have a history of it. And uh, Audrey's, of course, trying to figure out how you scratch the inside of your ear. Which, uh, oh, and hello, Rachel Fernandez from Fresno. We're glad to have you here, too. Um, the itching of the ear. Yeah, you'll see people do this one. You, you, know, you know that look? You've seen it? We know it in our family. We, we often make fun of a member of our family by doing this because there's somebody who does that. I'm not going to say who it is. <laughs> oh, it keeps saying poor connection, so I don't know if it's cutting out or not. You guys will have to let me know. Um, but there's, there's fewer comments than I'm used to seeing come up and so I'm wondering if it's if it's cutting people out and it's because of just the Wi-Fi where I'm located I uh, can't help it uh, okay Pamela are you talking about when you cut your drum it looked like a, a large cut oh yeah more on that you'll you'll find out um, <laughs> no that wasn't the large one it wasn't since it was magnified which I love being able to see the screen I agree Pamela that was really cool how long was the actual cut he made in the eardrum oh my goodness if I was to measure it how long was that cut? I would say under three millimeter in length. Um, yeah, even when it gets extended in a future part of the series, uh, we're still just talking at most three millimeters. So get your get your little thing. At, well, here I'll, I'll just show you with my my fingers what I think. What there? I think that's what it was. Let me let me get right up to the camera for you guys, so you can see what I think it was. I think it was a about that, which you can tell when in the video it shows inside of the, the fingers of Dr. Fife, the actual tube. It just has to be big enough for that um, wide part of the tube on either end to get through it. That's how big it is. Uh, I was cutting out, but it's been fine for several minutes now. And, oh, Petra's here. Hi, Petra. We're so glad that you caught us. Petra, all the way from... Sweden and uh, going through your give us a quick little um, assessment of how you're doing these days Petra Petra of course having been gone through uh, chemotherapy for her lymphoma and we're all thinking for uh, thinking about and praying for Petra um, as, as you go through this uh, medical adventure uh, that nobody would wish ever to have to go through um, but we are glad that you share with us when uh, when you're able to and that you're able to participate in our, our live videos. Yes, everybody say hi to Ty Petra. Okay, so Audrey is seeing that it's cutting out. And, and we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here pretty soon. I, I really do appreciate you guys being patient with the, the connection tonight. Oh, and Jeanette from Ireland. Does it take long for the eardrum to heal? Actually, sometimes they, they heal too quickly. As, as the... Uh, the eardrum, like many skin surfaces, uh, has desquamation occur and, and uh, new cells grow. It, it can push the tube out, and eventually it does. You know, within six months or so, they're usually out there. Oh, Lauren, thanks for being here. We're glad to have you. Uh, Lauren is a healthcare professional, so it's good to have her here. Rifleman Rocks, um, thank you for greeting Petra. But yeah, within about six months, they'll, they'll, they'll fall out on purpose. And by that time, the fluid accumulation problem should completely be resolved. Uh, and fall out. and then kids they they fall out in about the same amount of time too. And okay, and, and Sarah's here too, and we'll greet Sarah. Thank you all for being a part of things. Please do uh, keep your so that, and those of you who are watching this after the fact, keep your alerts on so that you can get the notifications. That's the little bell icon on the Auburn Medical Group channel page. If you go to that in the channel page in uh, YouTube by searching for Auburn Medical Group, finding the little channel icon, clicking on that, you'll see a little bell icon somewhere on the right toward the top of the, you, you need to hit that. And then in your settings, when you're in YouTube on whatever device you're on, adjust notifications so you'll get them so that, so that we can keep doing this and you'll know when we do go live. Also, it lets you know uh, if you set it up for it, when uh, new videos come out so you can catch them early on, which I do ask that you you try if, if you can. Uh, if it's all convenient, please do watch our videos right when they come out, uh, 4 o'clock on Tuesdays and Fridays, because that is part of the way that YouTube analyzes videos. It sees how fast the the watch 
uh, the watchers grow of a video and that uh, tells them, oh, people are really watching this and it has, uh, and the YouTube responds by putting that out on suggested videos, which helps us to get a lot more visibility. So that's why I ask that you, you watch them early when they first come out. So here's the update I've been waiting for from Petra. Not feeling good. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I got a lot of anxiety for my full body scan on Wednesday. Oh, so you're waiting to hear from that. I'm sorry about that. Um, and also, we have a, a little comment related to the drainage of the ears. Uh, Mini Mixy Q's universe. Constant drainage, tons of ear infection. Currently have ear tubes. Why? I've been allergy tested. And that's something you're going to have to go over with your ear ENT doctor to uh, work that up and find out what it was. In Shelly's case, it was not necessarily allergy, uh, possibly having had a cold. It doesn't have to be, you know, just too rapid of an altitude or uh, elevation change can do it. And... Uh, Joy Kincaid also here, uh, having a 10-month-old with fluid in his ears, and the ENT saying that they're too small for the tubes, severe hearing loss, oh my goodness, because of the fluid, and now has B-A-H-A, -A. and sorry off the top of my head, I'm not able to translate, and we have somebody commenting, it looks like in Arabic, and I'm sorry, Sarah, I'm not able to uh, translate that in real time. Uh, ear cleaning videos? Yes, Chelsea uh, asking about ear cleaning videos. They happen when we have patients. Oh, also, um, Patreon subscribers at patreon slash, patreon.com slash Auburn Medical Group, they'll see some ear things that don't necessarily get on the channel, and it's because they, they'll be um, just quick little things I won't make a whole video for, so I can't really put them on the main channel. But for the people who like that extra stuff, uh, you know, they, they pay a dollar a month or whatever to get the Patreon, and they're able to, to see those. So that's why uh, you don't see every little thing we do with the ears. Brent, yes, Brent, you asked a, a good question that we went into detail on. Uh, I, I answered it. I'm sure you saw it. And you're looking forward to part two. Oh, yeah, Brent, I think I wrote a little comment about uh, not just part two, but part uh, two and three. I think that was in response to your comment on uh, on part one. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much, everybody. This has been very good. Uh, I, again, I apologize for having a bad connection tonight. It's just because I'm not in our usual location. But I uh, look forward to all of your comments on tomorrow's video. And at 4 o'clock, you'll see part two of 